My name is Thomas Bolden, and I'm the engineering lead for serverless product at Firebase, such as Cloud Functions for Firebase and Firebase Hosting. And this is Sogi. Sogi is a full-stack developer who wants to build her own social network inspired by Sparky, the Firebase mascot. Her network, Sparkle, lets people leave sparks of insight across the internet. Today, we're going to see how Sogi can use Google Cloud Platform, Cloud Functions for Firebase, and Firebase extensions to build a production-ready application faster and easier. So first, let's talk about Google Cloud Platform. Google Cloud Platform has released Cloud Functions Generation 2, which reimagines Cloud Functions as a transparent layer on top of Cloud Build, Cloud Run, and EventArc. Now, this has many benefits to customers. First and foremost is that Cloud Run supports many requests per instance. By serving more requests with fewer instances, you have performance savings, because using fewer instances means you'll have fewer cold starts. A second benefit of concurrency is cost savings. Let's imagine that Sogi is going to handle three 150 millisecond requests that land 60 milliseconds apart from each other. With Cloud Functions Gen 1, this would hit three different instances, which would each get a 200 millisecond bill for a total of 600 milliseconds. With Gen 2, you pay for the instance being active, regardless of how many requests are being served at the same time. So this means her active span is rounded up to 300 milliseconds. Even with light concurrency, that's a 50% savings. Now, concurrency is only available to functions with at least one full CPU, which by default would be a 2 gigabyte function. However, at Firebase, we've done some cost forecasting and believe that for the vast majority of customers, it's more cost effective and performant to give you one full CPU for all cloud function sizes. This will raise the price per millisecond of your functions, but we believe this is the right choice for the vast majority of our customers. If, however, this isn't the right decision for you, look at our documentation for how to reverse this decision and go back to the pricing that you had with Gen 1, but just without concurrency. Now, concurrency also has another benefit to Sogi, because you see, Sogi gets bursts of traffic all the time, and she wants to tell Google to reserve a minimum number of instances to be able to serve traffic at a moment's notice. Because Sogi is using the default concurrency value of 80 requests per instance, she only needs 1 80th as many min instances to handle the same amount of traffic. But Sogi is a Firebase user. So how is she going to use Cloud Functions Gen 2? Well, today we're releasing Cloud Functions for Firebase's V2 API. It feels more natively JavaScript, it supports new event providers, and most importantly, it supports Cloud Functions Gen 2. Let's take a look. First, you'll notice that the V2 API is available at Firebase Functions slash V2. We package both APIs within the same SDK because we support code bases that target both versions. This allows you to test out Cloud Functions in the V2 API without having to rewrite your existing code base. Now, if we look at HTTPS functions, they look the same, functions.https to on request. However, in the v2 API, we can do deep imports. So let's clean that up a little. Now, in v1, all functions were configured with the global run with command. Because run with was available for all functions, we only allowed you to customize generic features applicable to all types of functions. But in Gen 2, functions are modified with a prefix to the callback. This options object is now in the context of your v2 function, which means we can offer much more nuanced features in, to be configured. Let's take a look at an HTTPS function that will override both memory and use cores. In v1, we had no cores option because cores didn't apply to all functions, so you had to use the cores middleware yourself. In v2, we support both memory and cores with one command line option. Are you tired of using the same options over and over? Well, starting in v2, we now have the set global options command. Here, we've applied memory, region, and concurrency choices to all v2 functions in our code base. And the v2 code base lets you add complexity progressively. Here's an object finalized function. 
Object finalized happens whenever an object in cloud storage finishes being uploaded. Here, we have the simple form, where we're listening to the default bucket for our project. Or we can add one more parameter to specify which bucket we want to listen to. If we have complex needs, we can replace that with an options object, and now we specify both the bucket and a timeout. Finally, you'll notice that in v2, there's a single parameter to callbacks. That's because in the v2 API, we now use cloud events for a more industry standard format and more portable code. So, Sogi says, check out the new v2 API in the Firebase Functions SDK. Now, Cloud Event Arc is the event backbone of Cloud Functions Gen 2, which will let us add new event providers. Today, I'm proud to announce the first new event provider, Firebase Alerts. Firebase Alerts powers the notifications you get in the Firebase console, as well as the emails you get regarding changes in your project. Through Firebase Alerts, we've now added functions for Crashlytics, app distribution, and changes to your project's billing settings. And Sogi thinks you should use this to automate your business. For example, Sogi wants to page her on-call DevOps engineer whenever an issue or a crash that was previously closed as fixed in a version of her application shows up in a new version. She knows she can do this with the on regression alert published event for Firebase Crashlytics. She also knows that she can add SMS capabilities to her project with the send SMS with Twilio extension. And starting today, she can even test that code locally because today we've added extension support to the Firebase emulator suite. It's so easy that Sogi has another tip. Use Firebase extensions to add capabilities to your project. Now Firebase extensions are getting even better with the addition of a new preview feature, custom events. Custom events are an upcoming feature to Cloud Event Arc which are being offered to Firebase customers early. With custom events, you can now listen to changes that happen in your Firebase extensions and react to them with a V2 cloud function. For example, Sogi wants to offer a premium version of Sparkle called Sparkle Orange. She knows she can process payments for Sparkle Orange using the Run Payments with Stripe extension. This extension will automatically annotate the tokens for all user sessions with the subscription that they have, which means Sogi can use Firebase rules to lock down premium features to paying customers. However, Sogi wants to help users keep their subscriptions active. So she knows that the Run Payments with Stripe extension now publishes the custom event, Stripe Invoice Payment Failed. By listening to this event in a V2 cloud function, she can now notify the user that a payment has failed and the issue needs to be addressed or avo to avoid a lapse in subscription. Sogi says, use custom events to add features to your extensions. Now, Sparkle Orange is getting popular, but Sogi wants to improve adoption further. She's decided that she can improve adoption by offering new customers of Sparkle a free trial. Sogi uses the new blocking auth functions for cloud functions for Firebase. Blocking auth functions allow her to customize the behavior of either a user account being created or a session when the user logs on. Here, she listens to the before user created event so that she can modify the claims that will be minted for this user to include an expiration date of their free trial. Now she can use Firebase rules to lock down these premium features to be available to either customers who have an active subscription or who are still enjoying their free trial. Now, Sogi says, use blocking off functions to customize user management. Now, let's talk about another set of advanced features available for both Gen 1 and Gen 2 users, .m files and Cloud Secrets Manager. With Cloud Secrets Manager, Sogi can keep API keys and other sensitive information outside of her function source code and outside of her function definitions. With .m files, she has an industry standard way of applying environment variables to her application. .m files also support project overrides. Let's imagine Sogi has a project with a prod alias and a project with a staging alias. She can keep common environment files in a .m file. 
Meanwhile, she can put environment variables for her production application in .env.prod and for her staging application in .env.staging. Also, if she wants to override the behavior of her local emulator, she can modify .env.local. So let's see where Sogi uses this in practice. Blogs and news articles have started embedding Sparks into their websites, and Sogi wants to encourage this. So she's added an SDK and an API that helps people embed Sparks inside a website. She wants this API to be fast, faster than a database read fast. So she is going to use Firestore Bundles. Firestore Bundles let us package the results of a query and deliver it to a client who will then deserialize those results and use them without having to query the backend. Because Sogi wants this to be lightning fast, she's actually going to store saved queries in Cloud Memory Store for millisecond level latency. Cloud Memory Store will be installed in a virtual private cloud, or VPC. She can then access that VPC inside her cloud function using a VPC connector. This means that the Redis API of Cloud Memory Store will be accessible to her function over a private IP address. She puts that private IP address in port in her .env.prod file. However, Sogi chose to use Cloud Memory Store and the Redis API because Redis is open source software that she can install locally. Sogi uses this to install a local copy of Redis on her machine and puts its address in her .env.local file. Now, when Sogi launches the Firebase emulator suite, her emulated cloud functions can talk to her Redis application, and her program can work seamlessly both in development and in production. So Sogi says, keep secrets private with Cloud Secret Manager and use .env files to change the way code behaves across projects. Now, Sogi wants to improve adoption by sending a throwback email. Once a year, Sogi wants to send an email to all of her customers that help remind them of the communities with which they've engaged. Sogi knows that she can send these emails with the trigger email with SendGrid extension. However, she also knows that SendGrid has a 600 requests per minute uh, API limit. But Sogi has millions of users, so how can she possibly send the, all those emails? Well, Sogi does this thanks to our new partnership with the Cloud Tasks team. Cloud task queues are great at throttling large bursts of traffic. So she can use a cloud task queue function to enqueue these millions of API requests. And by setting the max dispatch per second field, she never has to worry about rate limits again. The Sogi says, use task queue functions to handle large bursts of traffic. Now, Sogi is getting rather sophisticated. She's hired multiple team to manage multiple features of Sparkle. She can now use the new code basis feature of Cloud Functions for Firebase to manage separate parts of code that are each tightly coupled. By using code bases, she can keep different parts of functions in different directories or even different source repositories entirely. And soon, the Firebase command line will even recognize if a code base hasn't been modified since last deploy and skip it during Firebase deploy thus improving the speed and reliability of CI, CD pipelines. So Sogi says, use code bases to manage decoupled code. With that, let's take a look back at all the tips Sogi has given us to make a production-ready application faster and easier. She said, use concurrency, min instances to manage capacity and costs. Check out the new V2 API in the Firebase Functions SDK. Use Firebase Alerts functions to automate your business. Use Firebase extensions to add capabilities to your project. Use custom events to add features to your extensions. Use blocking auth functions to customize user management. Keep secrets private with Cloud Secrets Manager. Use .m files to change the way code behaves across projects and in local emulation. Use task queue functions to handle large bursts of traffic. And use code bases to manage decoupled code. With that, she and you are both ready to create production-ready applications faster. Thank you very much. Arigato, obrigado, como se anda, xixi, gracias, temerakasi, and merci. Have a great day.